Okay. Hey, everybody. We are in chapter 16, the very last chapter in the book of Romans. Uh, Romans uh, is the one of the greatest books in the Bible, in my humble opinion. And even uh, as just literature, even those that don't believe in God, like I said before, uh, lawyers back in the 18th uh, and 19th centuries would study the book of Romans and give his arguments uh, as a thesis at the end of their education because it's so such a wonderful book and uh, a lot of legal terms in Romans. We went through it. And now I'm just do I just do a survey. I don't get really into the super deep things because that's not uh, that's not my dragon to slay. Uh, you can get a lot uh, deeper into Romans with other teachers. I'm just doing a survey through the epistles of Paul, which are so very important to the church age. He is the uh, apostle to the Gentiles. He is the apostle. Uh, to the church age, he was given the mysteries of God by Jesus Christ himself. And before I go into uh, Romans, let's just go ahead and uh, I'll show you where I get my authority for this. Uh, Galatians chapter 1, uh, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and our God and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Uh, verse 11, but I certify you, I guarantee you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The gospel that Paul preaches is not repent and be baptized. It's not repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Uh, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. The gospel that uh, Paul preached is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4, the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. All right. Now, I'm going to mess up a lot of words in this chapter, and I apologize. I have dyslexia, folks. <laughs> I can uh, and uh, so uh, just bear with me. I commend you, uh, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centur Centuria. All right, Phoebe, a lot of uh, most scholars believe that Phoebe brought uh, the epistle to Rome, uh, and that's who brought this epistle to them. I can't prove that with the Bible, but that. That's probably the truth. That ye receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a securer of many, and of myself also a securer that's a helper. I greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ. Jesus, that's in uh, Acts chapter 18, if you want to look it up. Uh, remember them from the book of Acts, uh, who have for my life laid down their ne their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Uh, they they went out of their way. I mean, they they risked their life for Paul. I likewise greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well beloved Epitinius. Uh, who is the first fruits of Achaia unto Christ. So evidently this guy was the first guy that got saved there. And uh, again, they said, uh, greet them that are in the church in their house. Churches folks started uh, in people's homes, probably out of necessity. Uh, they didn't have to have these great big million dollar buildings. They could uh, just meet wherever. You could go down by the riverside. I greet Mary, who bestowed much labor on us. Salute Andronicius and Junia, my kinsmen, and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles. There's somebody there. 
uh, who also were in Christ before me, greet Amplius, uh, my beloved in the Lord. Uh, these guys were apostles too, so evidently they were more than just the 12. Uh, the 12 were the chosen apostles by Christ, but it, it's my uh, understanding that if you've actually seen the risen Lord, uh, the resurrected Jesus Christ, uh, that's one of the qualifications to be an apostle. So there were probably more like 120 than 12. I greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Salute Urbane, our helper in Christ. Statius, uh, my beloved. Salute Apelius. Approved in Christ, salute them, which are of Aristobulus. I'm not taking a lot of time with the words. <laughs> I'm just uh, doing the best I can. I know I'm. I know I'm goofing them up. So uh, you can laugh if you want. I salute Heredian, uh, my kinsmen. Greet them that be of the household of Narcius. Nar Nar I can't say that. <laughs> which are in the Lord. Now, wouldn't you just love to have your name written down for all eternity uh, as someone that served the Lord? Uh, we'll meet all these guys in heaven, folks. Salute Trophenia, uh and Trophosa, who labor in the Lord. Salute uh, the beloved Persis, which labored much in the Lord. Salute Rufus. Chosen in the Lord and his mother and mine. Salute uh, Synocritus, Polygman, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermes, and the brethren which are with them. Salute Palugus uh, and Julia Norris and his sister and Olympus and all the saints which are with them. Uh, evidently, he knew a lot of people that were at the Church of Rome. He hadn't been there yet, but uh, he knew a lot of Christians there. Salute one another with a holy kiss. The Churches of Christ salute you. Now now we're going to get into some doctrine again. Uh, verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses uh, contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Mark them. Call them out. Uh, one of my favorite teachers, Bible teachers, is Dr. Peter S. Ruckman. you got to separate the wheat from the chaff with Dr. Ruckman, but he will call somebody out by name. <laughs> and uh, this is where he gets his authority for that. For they that are uh, such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. There are a lot of televangelist preachers and uh, a lot of people, they're not serving the Lord, folks. They're serving their own belly. They're trying to make money off Jesus. I think there's going to be a special place in hell for those guys. And they're deceiving a lot of people with fair speeches. Uh, they just... Uh, deceive the hearts of the simple for your obedience is come abroad unto all men i am glad therefore on your behalf but yet i would have you wise unto the which is good and simple concerning evil and like you uh wise uh knowledgeable in the scriptures and the things that are true and the true good doctrine and just uh Simple and evil things. Don't study the evil things. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timotheus, uh, my fellow worker, my work fellow. That's uh, Now that would be uh, Timothy, the guy he wrote, uh, his son in Christ, the one he wrote the uh, books about. Uh, two, first and second Timothy, and Lucius and Jason and Sosipater, uh, my kinsmen, salute you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, salute you in the Lord. Now, Tertius penned it. 
Paul spoke it, and this guy was the scribe. He's the one that wrote it down. I don't think uh, Paul actually, with his own hand, wrote very many uh, uh, epistles, actually wrote them. Um, some people said he had problems uh, with his eyes or something. I don't know. Uh, he had a thorn in the flesh, and that's what they say he couldn't see real well. I don't know if that's true or not. Gas, mine host, and of the whole church saluteth you. Erastus, the chamberlain of the city, saluteth you, and Quartus, a brother, a chamberlain. Let's look that up just since I got my fancy Bible here. Uh, 23. A treasurer. All right? Yeah. A treasurer. Uh, that's what a chamberlain is. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel. Again, He's not, he's not saying it's his only gospel, but it's the gospel that was given to him by Jesus Christ. Uh, we just went there. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Uh, this gospel was hid in God uh, since the beginning of the wor world, which we're, he's going to say it right here. Now to him that uh, is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Again, the mysteries were given to Paul. Mysteries are something that are hid in God. Uh, they weren't revealed in the uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, they weren't revealed in the early part of Acts. You got to rightly divide the word of truth or you're going to get all messed up and there's uh, people say there's a lot of contradictions in the Bible, and that's where they get them. There are actual contradictions in the Bible if you don't rightly divide it, if you don't put it in its place, all right? Which was kept secret since the world began, but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God, made known to all nations for the obedience of faith to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. And that concludes perhaps the greatest book that has ever been written in the Bible, <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, it deals with the... Uh, all the T-I-O-N, uh, the words that end with T-I-O-N, it deals with every one of them. Uh, we briefly went through it. I know I don't do a deep uh, study on it, but uh, it's so important. The book of Romans is the book where you're going to find out salvation, the doctrine of salvation. How do you get saved in the church age? It's right here in Romans. All right, and uh, we'll start with... Uh, First Corinthians next time, and uh, look at that. I, I just love this little Bible. This was a eighteen dollar, twenty three dollars with the shipping, and look how clear that is. I just love it. So I'm enjoying this. Uh, I really enjoyed studying the Book of Romans with you. Those of you that have gone through the whole book with me, uh, God bless you, and thank you for being patient. I hope you got a little something out of it. I hope you learned. Uh, maybe something, if nothing else, I ex uh, at least I read it. So, all right, folks. Well, uh, that ends the book of Romans. This comfort print in this Bible is cool, folks. If you don't have one, if you're a King James person, Thompson Chain or Thomas Nelson surely did a good job on this comfort print. Uh, I really like it. Like you can. Uh, I mean, this is my 180. I love this Bible. But that comfort print, and it's well done 
easy to read. Anyway, I'm babbling on. God bless you. I love you. Uh, read your Bibles and pray without ceasing. And uh, we'll get into the book of 1 Corinthians next time. All right. Lord bless each and every one of you.